Good morning everyone, welcome to my channel. So you'll be watching this on Saturday morning, but it is still Thursday. I've just finished filming my nativity scene uh, prep. Um, and I went to hop up and get ready to go to the airport to pick up my friends who are coming for the weekend. And I got a message to say that the computers are down in Melbourne airport. So no one's going anywhere for at least an hour. So I thought, well, I shall film my uh, first prompt, which is wreath. And it's going to be the bluebird wreath. I touched on it in the nativity panel. Um, if anyone's concerned or confused of why the nativity's popped up, it's just an extra page that I'm going to put on the back cover of my red book. So that's why that one was filmed as well. So my plan is to do a wreath embroidery with some of the techniques that Rachel showed by cutting out three dimensional leaves or some form of leaf, maybe even a holly leaf, I'm sort of thinking. And I'd really love a, a bird in the center of bluebird. So I went to the cupboard and found a circular um, uh, shape to sort of form my wreath. So I thought if I at least start with that and draw my circle, and I'm thinking I might overlay the circle a few times. I don't know how it'll look, but maybe just move it slightly around my page and it'll sort of make my wreath look a little bit bigger than what the container is. Yeah, I like that. I might do it again. So I'm just sort of shimmying it along and around. And these lines I'll be able to use as my stem to build my plant material, my foliage of my wreath. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so the next thing I might do is get my bird into position because he might end up being covered if I don't make a decision. So as I mentioned in the video I just did with the nativity, I'm going to use a bird from um, Lisa Maddox, uh, Alfred. And in the back of the pattern, which you can buy online, is heaps of bird bodies that can be used to create something. And you have bodies and um, wings and tails. I just don't know which one. What I might do is I'm going to trace all of the bodies. Even if I don't, well, I won't use all of them, but at least I've got the body and I can work out which one best suits. And it might be a case of I need to cut them down. I'm not even on camera. Let's move that up. Okay, there's a ping on my phone. Maybe the plane is... No, nah, it's delayed again. Mm -hmm. Oh well, I'll just keep crafting until I get that message to say they're on the plane. It's gonna be a long day for them. They've been up since three o'clock in the morning to get to the airport <laughs> to catch this plane. And now the computers are down. Don't you love modern transport? It's all good until those computers fail, isn't it? Okay, I like this shape. Now, my bird is gonna overpower my wreath at the moment, but I don't think it'll be too much of a problem because well, A, I can cut the bird down to sort of fit a little better. And, or I make the bird oversized and the wreath is sort of, you know, in the background. I think that's a good start. So, for my little blue bird, where's that scissors? 
So all I've done is traced it on some kitchen baking paper. That's all that's needed. And then this can just lay onto some blue fabric. And then I go from there. And let's say one of these looks great, but it's too big. Well, I can use my pencil and just decrease it in size. To suit. Okay, that's one. It's so so cute, so simple design, but so effective. You've got the really good shapes of the bird, so at the glance of an eye, anyone can see that it's a bird. So very clever. And then having all of the little elements that you can create your own bird with wings and feathers and then you lay embroidery over the top they're really really cute I know I did a few birds on my and books tags when I did the 52 tag project and they were super fun and then I found this pattern and I've used Alfred in the Roxy Journal of Stitchery volume one at the beginning of the year, I did a purple Alfred. I think I used this one, actually. And he came up beautifully. Especially when you do the beads on the top of his head, like little strips of beads. It's very cute. So probably this bird won't be the one I use because I have used him before now that I sort of think about it. But we'll see. I like how his tail hangs down. So he actually looks like he could be sitting a lot better on a wreath. Okay. Bluebird. All right, so we've got this little fellow. Oh, I don't do like him. But we have used him before. Then there's this guy. Uh, not loving him. I think it's because he's very curvy. The wreath is a circle, so he blends. He's just not going to stand out, I don't think. Then we got this little guy. Let's see him actually stitched in Lisa's book because he's looking like a duck to me. Yeah, can't. Where is he? That's the second one that I just rejected, this guy. Yeah, I think he's he's not going to do it for me. That's the little guy that's looking like my favourite so far. And this other little fellow. What's he? Well, there's a few other birds, but they're pretty... That's that. Looks like a chicken. No. I think it has to be this guy again. I like the fact that his tail is coming down out of the image. So I'm really, really liking that. So what I might do now is I'm just going to do a bit of a line around him because that'll tell me where he's going to sit. So as I plan the rest of the wreath, I'll know that my Alfred is going to be sitting right there. So don't put anything under Alfred. Like so. So that's where Alfred will be. Now, let's have a look at a shape. I need some pen and paper. Let's have a look at a shape of a leaf. Let's see if I can draw something. I wouldn't mind doing a holly leaf because it's sort of very, it's going to be very string, um, twig-like. By the time I embroider those circles, it's going to be very twiggy. So I need a template for a holly leaf. Now, testing my memory here. Holly, I'm not even on camera. Holly has this sort of shape about it. Do we like that? Bring that together. More of a scallop. 
try it again. Little one and a big one. All right, so let's cut out that and see if it's the right size for my wreath and it's not too big and overpowering because we've already got a big bird sitting in there. He's a, he's a big boy. He's a bit oversized, but I like that because he will look really good. I don't know if in nature the peaks in holly are opposite each other or I can be a little abstract. That looks that looks terrible. Forget that. Let's Google some holly. Are they even in real life? Okay, Mr. Google, please tell me what holly looks like. Let's just get my phone happening here. Holly. Okay, let's have a little look. Oh, we can do some berries too. Um, well, that doesn't really help me a lot, but that leaf there, they are. So what you see one side, you do see the other side. What's that side? Oh, no, they're different. Okay, there's different varieties. Oh, look, I'm overworking this idea. I think my holly will be just fine. Does it look like holly? It looks like holly. Let's just cut this out and see how it looks. That other one was a bit dodgy, but... I'm not using that and I probably only need three or four leaves because of my um, space I think this one looks better okay cut it out there's my holly yep that will work. So we've got our holly. There's another ping. What's that say? Still waiting. They are starting to board two other flights that were before us. So hopefully we'll have movement soon. Okay, you guys are getting a blow by blow um, update on these flights coming out of Melbourne. So I'm liking that. There'll be holly just smattering of it around. As we sort of place that in there and remember this is all blue so it's going to be quite abstract this okay so the holly will work the other thing I wanted to do is a star an embroidered star in amongst it and also some more branches so what I mean by that is some if birdie is there let's have I might actually just draw it using this template and that'll really tell me where everything's going to sit and then what I need to embroider I can and then what's going to be fabric applique into position can just drop into these gaps. So working my design I guess is what I'm trying to say. So let's do another holly down here. I've got an a a long landscape style panel so I sort of do need to creep out my design a little bit oh, you know those beads I picked up the blue beads from that bead shop they can be my berries oh how nice are they where are they stay focused they will work and then I might put some form of extra bristle in here what can i do maybe i'll pick up on that line and just do a bit of a branch like that yeah i like that and maybe this stitching can go down the center of my holly um Let's do the other side of the bird because that will balance him 
you know what I could do is some of the holly I stitch the leaf and some I use fabric just to sort of mix it up a bit. Let's have that one go there. Okay. And maybe we do another embroidery here of this little twiggy thing. Yep. I could overlap that holly. If I do two different blues as leaves, I could put a second holly there. Yeah, I like that. Am I on camera? Yep. The beautiful thing about these pens is you can sketch away and then, yeah, I like that. So the, the holly will be overlapping there a little. That will work. We'll do another twig coming off of there. I feel like I need another twig down here. Okay. And then the beads, wherever the holly meets the twig, we can do some of those blue bead clusters. A couple in there would work. A couple in here. Oh, I'm, I won't do any more there. That's, that's looking gorgeous. Love it. Now, I did want to put a stars, some stars in. Um, might, oops. Sorry, guys. That's the alarm to make sure we were out of bed in time to go to the airport. So my husband's actually still in bed. So I'll be able to tell him, don't hop up. They are not coming yet. So I should probably stop the video and go and tell him, but I'll be right. He needs to hop up. We'll actually have time now to have a bit of breakfast ourselves. So let's put some holly twigs there. We'll put another holly up there. This is a good way to do this because I was just going to go ahead and cut the leaves. But this is like matting out or planning out where it's all going to go. Might do another twig there. Those little twigs are good. They're just going to soften my image a little bit. Yeah, I'm like that. I wonder if I could draw a star. Well, I'm really testing myself now, aren't I? Um, there used to be a way you used to draw a star that was a triangle over a triangle. Remember that when we were kids? To get your shape. Let's cut that out and see what that looks like. It might be wrong. <laughs> might be a better way to do a star than that. But let's cut him out and see what he looks like. It doesn't mean he has to stay on there. Maybe I could find some star buttons. I'm sure I've got something. But maybe not blue. So that's the, that's the trick. When you do a colour theme, it can limit you with, you know, your bits you use. I could add buttons to this but once again I need a lot of blue buttons to cover my bunting so I don't really have a lot of buttons okay I like that that star so let's let's pop a few stars maybe they could hang Ooh. Or is it too busy? No, nah, it's never too busy. So 
So I'm just going quiet. Sort of have all this space out here. Do I hang some random stars down? No, don't be afraid of the space. Let the space be. I'm just going to Sorry guys, I'm thinking I like the idea of this star, but maybe the star could be made out of lace to add that different textile into the image. I cut a little lace star and just have a few of them on this outer edge. That could work. Plus, it'll help increase my image because, like I said, I've, I'm working in landscape here and my wreath is circular, so it could do with being stretched a little bit. And I guess the stars don't have to be connected to the wreath. We can build our image out with these random little stars. Yeah, I'm liking that. Sort of stretching my image. I guess the birds sitting in a wreath in the air and there's stars around. So you can always create a story. Do I like it there or do I leave it at that? No, I need something there. That's looking good. Do I do another sprig? Yep. Do I another, do another leaf? Yep. Can never have enough holly. Okay. Little bluebird is really starting to look like he's nestled in that wreath. I'm just looking up at my TV now. So, yeah, I'm really liking that. Okay, so the next thing I need to do with my little bird is I need to decide what sort of wing we want on him. So there's a few little wings here. I think he needs quite a large wing, so we might just trace a wing. And I'm thinking this one here, he's already got his tail. So let's draw let's do that. Well now I've got two projects that I can stitch this weekend and the pressure's off because you'll get your Saturday video and if they're all day at the pinball competition saturday and sunday i will definitely get a video film saturday morning which you'll see sunday and it will probably be the prep for the second panel for my red book so you'll see that sunday and that'll give me the whole weekend to do some work on these three panels and um like that but it might need to be a bit smaller let's just trim his little wing back just to get him right yeah I like that because it won't interfere then with those little holly beads that I'm going to put there so we are forming a lovely little image here and a plan so it'll be a case of find some fabric for my holly I'm pretty sure I'll do lace for my stars fabric for my bird um, there'll be beads 
feel like I need another holly there, but maybe I don't. Be beads can be on there. I can do some embroidery for my twigs. Might do another twig there. Another one there, just to fill it in more detail. Make it a little bit more twiggy. Okay, I like it. Um, I wonder if we could, you know what I'm looking at now, see how the birds tile in my drawing, the bird could be two ways. It could be over the wreath and his tail's on the outside. Or the wreath can come over him and he's actually sitting. Yeah, no, I will cover it. Because now that I cover that with my fingers, I can sort of block out that, that um, circular stitching. No, that, that'll be good. He's going to look gorgeous. The other thing I could do is... We could give him a nest. Now there was a, a tag I did. Um, was it with Anne Brooks? No, I know what it was. Hang, hold that thought, guys. How are we going for time? 26 minutes. I did a collage page a little while ago. And I did a bird's nest. There we go. See that there? Using wool, lace and some leaves and things like that and twigs. I might create a little nest here for him to be sitting in. Whether it'll be too much, you know, it might all start looking very busy, but there, there's potential that in that zone, clustering some bits and pieces together, create um, a bit of a bird's nest. So something else, there's another one there. That's pretty simple, that's just folding a piece of um, lace yeah let's hang on hold the phone I've had an idea I'm just grabbing my big blue exploding thingy and I'm looking for a doily a doily center oh yeah if I could find a smaller one of those which I'm sure I'd have even if I gathered that I can create in there, I'm going to pin it. it. If it doesn't stay, it doesn't matter. I've got no pins left because I've used them all on that, the 2D one. I'm going to pin that there just as my idea. And that's going to be the start of um, a nest. So if I get some twine, yes, hold the thought, I'm off. Back in a minute. It's not exactly the colour I'm looking for, but if I get some twine in the dark colours and then put a, a smattering of that there as well. Oh, I don't mind that. Let's have a little play. Doesn't matter if we don't use it. We need some sticks in our nest and this will give the impression of sticks. So I just twisted a few of them together. I'm going to use this to twist around as well. Gives the impression it's a bundle. I don't have needle and thread here, do I? Tiny little bit there. How are we going for time? Half an hour. They're stuck at the airport in Melbourne. I can keep playing. So I'm just grabbing now my cotton, my just sewing machine cotton. And I'm going to stitch. Oops, can't pick it up. I need, look, I need to put that down and focus on threading the needle first. Popping a knot in the end. Gosh, how quickly I go off on tangents. It's too funny. 
And see, look, when I picked this up, there was a couple bits of this finer, paler twine. I'm going to stitch them in there too. Why not? This little bird has been gathering twigs. A little bluebird and she is getting ready to nest on a wreath of holly. <laughs> I'll tell you. Okay, let's just stitch those few little bits together. Like so. Whoops. So that should hold. And then that goes into there. Oh, I love it. All right, let's keep going. I'm going to stitch that now. So the doily is just folded, not quite in half. I've just sort of made it sit a little bit on top of itself. I'm going to stitch now the doily and these twigs together to make my nest. Like so. This will be, I think, really pretty. So day number two on my bunting, we'll have this little bird sitting in its nest with beautiful blue beads as berries. When I, I, knew, I had a feeling wreath was coming, like it'd have to be a prompt. And I don't want a lot of green in any of my panels because I'm forcing myself to stay within a color palette of blue and the red. I mustn't lose my bits because I'm going to need them to cut out the fabric shapes. So I'm thinking, oh, a blue wreath. And then when the, the bird popped into my head and being that Lisa is collaborating with the girls as well, I thought, well, that's, that's lovely. I can use that pattern again. It's great when you can reuse. See, I'll be able to, I'm, just had an idea. I'll be able to put beads around this nest edge that are in the gold champagnes, crystals, you know, completely different, not the blue. So I've got like a neutral area. Oh, I'm loving this. So I'm just going to sit that there under Mr. Bird or Mrs. Bird. The holly will fit there, those blue beads. Then there'll be um, neutral beads in there. I'll just pin that for now. Oh, this pin is hopeless. Let me get some pins. I can never have enough pins. I have thousands of pins, yet I have no pins. How is this? Oh. Goodness me. Okay, there is my nest. Oh, I love it. Look at that. Okay, how are we going for time? Half an hour to go. Awesome. That means we can have a little fiddle in the fabrics and see which fabrics we want to do our little bird in. So let's have a look at the dark blues first and see what would make a nice little bird. I do like, oh, you're not even on the shot. Okay, let me get my templates up further. Lift the little bird, lift the fabrics into shot. So that's why it's good to have your TV up on the wall showing you, you know, what you can see or what you guys can see. This is a real dark blue and a real pale blue in that. Oh, that's pretty too. A spot. It's a bit boring. Ooh. Oh, decisions. Then I've got the pile of all of them. So I had visions of the actual wreath being quite pale. So the holly and all that would be pale and the bird would be quite dark. 
which I think I'll still do because if I do lace, um, a lace star, having a paler leaf would actually be quite pretty. So the wreath would sort of disappear a little bit and let the bird pop. But I wouldn't say there's a fabric there that I'm, oh, what's that fabric? That's what we need. That must be sitting in amongst the red. Let's cut out a holly in this. And just have a little play. That must be in my box of reds. So I think I know where that is. Let's just draw the holly onto this fabric. Well, technically they should be on the plane and on their way by now, but they are still sitting. Should be getting them very frustrated. So let's cut out this little holly. So then I can do the branch of the wreath in chocolate colors, maybe two or three different browns just to create a little bit of dimension there like they've got three sticks twisted together so three different browns i could even do three different thicknesses of uh, thread couch on one embroider another ah uh, yeah i'm liking that nice and neutral Yep. So the, I think the leaves will be that sort of tone. <clears throat> and this, this one here, I'm thinking for the bird, where's the end of it? There it is. Will he fit on that tiny little scrap? Oh, he does. Awesome. So let's just trim that off. And then I can do a lighter wing on him, even a, a lace wing. I'm going to try and hold him on there. It won't matter if his shape changes a little bit and cut. I should pin it, but I'm being a bit... Oh, I better pin it. <clears throat> it's already wriggling. It won't look like a bird if I carry on the way I'm going here. pin it and then just trim out Alfred so it's a boy and he makes the nest for the girl which does happen the boys do all the hard work build the nest and then in comes the little lady to lay her eggs and then sometimes she may disappear and the boy looks after him. So Alfred is doing the hard work here and he is making the nest ready for spring. There we go. Now I just need to trim around that body there. Now you can use ironing on fusible webbing which would then make the bird quite rigid would stop fraying but i have gone off of that product to be honest because it's really hard to embroider through and my fingers are sore enough as it is without having um, resistance coming from um, you know my fabric so I have honestly gone off of it and I've learned to embrace the frayed edges, which slow stitch sort of allows you to do. And the other thing is, is you can go around the edge of the little bird piece um, with uh, glitter glue and just put the tiniest little um, drizzle of glue. 
There we go. Needs to be a little bit more squished up. I'm not seeing his tail shape. Maybe I need to pivot him a little bit more just to allow that tail to be visible. Otherwise, it just looks like a blue blob. That's better. I can always readjust my holly to suit. Yeah, that's, that's good. So I'll pin that. I've lost a pin already. I'm sure I had two. Just want to pin the little nest on. Oops, let's get that pin in there properly. Okay. Lovely. So Alfred has his nest that he's working on. The holly is looking good and I think it'll be a mix of a couple different fabrics. We need a wing for Alfred. That needs to be some form of colour. Maybe I use this fabric. Do I use the spot? No, the spot's too similar. I might cut the wing. <clears throat> out of this and just see how it looks. So that's a good start. Like I said, I don't know how much stitching I'll get done, but I have a feeling a bit. I do have um, a friend coming over all day Saturday and we're going to work on the charity journals because her husband's going with them into the competition. Oh, I love that. So um, Kev will join them and they'll all go in and Marianne and I are going to work on the uh, charity journals. Yeah, I'm loving that. So just recapping, and I think I will stay in this colour palette. The, the wreath will be quite neutral. The stars will be maybe lace. I'm thinking they will be. The twigs will be browns, and I'll look for different fibres, maybe even some of this type of fibre, and couch it all down so it becomes quite textured. Then I'll embroider the little um, leaves and there's a dark blue crochet cotton. Here it is. That will be the little blue twigs. That'll help that wreath sort of pop a little bit and drag it into the Alfred colours. He's got his nest and then I can put berries in beads. Let me grab them. I did end up getting a second container because my blue beads started to explode because I didn't have many. And after going to that shop down at Browns Plains, um, the beads sort of became quite a good collection. So I definitely needed. So these little beads will be the berries. I will use the gold beads in the nest just to put a little sparkle in there. Look, I've got some star star buttons made out of mother of pearl. Maybe I could pop a few of them in the nest as well around the bottom here just to jazzy it up. So there you go. That's looking pretty good. And I have a plan. So I've got my bird cut out. So I don't really need that template, but I better hang on to it just in case something happens. I need more holly cut out which will slide in around the place so i need one two three four five six more hollies so i'll keep working on that um and the star of course which have i lost must be here somewhere goodness me looks like i've lost the star doesn't matter oh here it is 
So there's my little star that needs to be cut out of something as well. Okay, thank you everyone for joining me. Look at this blue lace. Maybe I could work a little bit of that in. It's a different blue. I've put it in the, the kit, but it's nearly a lilac -y purple, but I do love it. It doesn't really go with my fabrics, but I'll leave it in there because you never know. Okay, I'm going to finish the video there. Let me check my phone. There's still no message. It's quarter past seven and they're not on their plane, which was to have left at 6.30. So delays, delays. All right, everyone. Have a great weekend because, as I said, you're probably watching this and it's Saturday morning. And, um, yeah, enjoy your weekend. And I'll see you all in the next video. Bye for now.